This is Bishop George Murray. On behalf of your Catholic friends and neighbors in the Diocese of Youngstown, I invite you to join us for this celebration of the Holy Mass. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the Sacrifice of the Mass here at St. Paul's Monastery in Canfield, Ohio. Today is the 26th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our celebrant is Father Matthew. Our opening hymn can be found in your missal, number 248, All Are Welcome, number 248. Please rise. Let us build a house where love can dwell and all can safely live. A place where saints and children tell how our hearts learn to forgive. Built of hope and dreams and vision, rock of faith and vault of grace. Hear the love of Christ shall end division. All are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome. In this place, let us build a house where prophets speak and words are strong and true, where all the children dare to sing, to dream God's reign anew. Here the cross shall stand as witness. And a symbol of God's grace. Here is one we claim the faith of Jesus. All are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place. Good morning. We welcome all of you to our chapel here at St. Paul Monastery and those who are joining us over our ecumenical channel here in Northeast Ohio. Today we gather and celebrate the 26th Sunday in Ordinary Time. So we come together in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. Let us pray. 
O God, who manifest your almighty power, above all by pardoning and showing mercy, bestow, we pray, your grace abundantly upon us, and make those hastening to attain your promises heirs to the treasures of heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Amos. Thus says the Lord, the God of hosts, Woe to the complacent in Zion, lying upon beds of ivory, stretched comfortably on their couches. For they eat lambs taken from the flock and calves from the stall, improvising to the music of the harp like David, they devise their own accompaniment. They drink wine from bowls and anoint themselves with the best oils, yet they are not made ill by the collapse of Joseph. Therefore now they shall be the first to go into exile, and their wanton revelry shall be done away with. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise the Lord, my soul. Praise the Lord, my soul. Praise the Lord, my soul. Justice for the oppressed gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets captives free. Praise the Lord, my soul. Praise the Lord, my soul. The Lord gives sight to the blind. The Lord raises up those who were bowed down. The Lord loves the just. The Lord protects strangers. Praise the Lord, my soul. Praise the Lord, my soul. The fatherless and the widow he sustains, but the way of the wicked he thwarts. The Lord shall reign forever. Your God, O Zion, through all generations. Praise the Lord, my soul. Praise the Lord, my soul. Devotion, faith, love, patience, and gentleness. Compete well for the faith. Lay hold of eternal life to which you were called when you were made the noble confession in the presence of many witnesses. I charge you before God, who gives life to all things, and before Christ Jesus, who gave testimony under Pontius Pilate for the noble confession, to keep the commandment without stain or reproach until the appearance of our Lord Jesus Christ, that the blessed and only ruler will make manifest at the proper time the King of kings and Lord of lords, who alone has immortality, 
who dwells in an unapproachable light and whom no human being has seen or can see. To him be honor and eternal power. Amen. The word of the Lord. From the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to the Pharisees, There was a rich man who dressed in purple garments and fine linen and dined sumptuously each day. And lying at his door was a poor man named Lazarus covered with sores who would gladly have eaten his fill of the scraps that fell from the rich man's table. And dogs even used to come and lick his sores. When the poor man died, he was carried away by angels to the bosom of Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried. And from the netherworld, where he was in torment, he raised his eyes and saw Abraham far off and Lazarus at his side. And he cried out, Father Abraham, have pity on me. Send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am suffering torment in these flames. Abraham replied, My child, remember that you received what was good during your lifetime, while Lazarus likewise received what was bad. But now he is comforted here, whereas you are tormented. Moreover, between us and you a great chasm is established to prevent anyone from crossing who might wish to go from our side to yours or from your side to ours. He said, Then I beg you, Father, send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, so that he may warn them, lest they too come to the place of torment. But Abraham replied, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them listen to them. He said, Oh no, Father Abraham, but if someone from the dead goes to them, they will repent. And then Abraham said, If they will not listen to Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded if someone should rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Of course, a few announcements, as always. Again, a reminder of our football raffle, football tickets. Uh, We still have until the end of next month before you can start winning all your money. So if you want to buy some tickets, again, Brother Pasco has some. And I also know that some people bought tickets and took them home, and we're going to fill them out and have not brought them back. So if you want your name into the pot, you need to bring them back and give them to Brother Pasco as well. And also, we want to thank any of you who have brought items for our Bella's Women's Center. There are boxes in the back, and I appreciate anything that you have dropped off. And if all of a sudden you just remember now that you forgot to bring it, bring it next Sunday. That's fine. Bring it at any time, and we will get it down there to you. I also like to remind you that today in the church is Priesthood Sunday. And first of all, I am thankful for the gift of the priesthood that the Lord has given me. This year in November, it will be 35 years. And Father Edmund, the other priest here in our community, is celebrating 55 years. And to split the difference, Father Jeff, who will be returning back to us next month, is 45 years. Now you can see the pattern, right? 
But unfortunately, the pattern stopped with me. We haven't had anybody in a long time since 1985 in our congregation. So all the people that have come in after us are priests from other countries. So I'm going to ask you to pray for vocations. I'm going to ask you to pray and support for all your priests, not only us, but especially the priests in the Diocese of Youngstown as they're going through their new pastoral plan and things are being reorganized and restructured. Those priests are going to be spread kind of thin, and so they need your help and support and understanding that they are going through the time, trying times as much as the rest of us. And so what I'd like to share with you today is my vocation story, not because it's fantastic, not because it's any different than any others, but get you an understand of some of the various backgrounds that people have that accept the call to being a priest or religious. And so maybe you might want to go out and ask your pastor and ask your fellow, uh, other priest um, what their stories are. How did they come to be known that they were called to be a priest? As you know, I grew up in Louisville, Kentucky, and so as a boy, I did a lot of serving at Mass and felt called that maybe I might be a diocesan priest. And in the 1960s, in the late 1960s, we were invited when I was in the eighth grade, so this is 1968, ancient history for uh, some of us and ancient history uh, not too ancient for the rest of us. And they had, at that time, both a high school and a college seminary in Louisville. So we were invited to go and get a um, tour of the place. So I was the only one in my class that said I would be glad to go for a tour until the rest of my classmates find out that they could get a day off from school. And then all of a sudden, four or five others decided to go with me. And our tour guide was Father Bill Hammer, who is still a priest in the Archdiocese of Louisville, a couple years older than myself from my parish. And so he showed us around to the place. And unfortunately, in the next couple of years, both that high school seminary and the college seminary that they had closed in Louisville. So I went to the regular high school and did all the things that we do in high school, and then went into college at Moorhead State University in Moorhead, Kentucky, in the Eastern Mountain region of the state, and I was a communications major. I'm a radio TV major and a journalism minor. And because of that, when and I was a junior and started thinking, well, you know, in a couple of years, I'm going to be uh, getting out of college. What am I going to do? I saw an ad in the Catholic Digest. I used to have a vocation section in there. And there was this stern-looking Brother James man. Now, some of you know Brother James, who was with us for here. And it said, communicate for Christ. I said, oh, okay, that sounds like down my alley. So I wrote to the vocation director, who was Brother Ed Donaher, and so I talked to him as I finished out my schooling in Moorhead. And Brother Ed, as vocation director, felt it was important to go visit candidates where they lived rather than always inviting them to come and see us where we live. So he came to Louisville uh, during the winter time and spoke with my mother and I, and I gave him a tour of Louisville, and we talked and had some questions. And I remember the one question my mother asked was, well, what time does he have to get up in the morning? <laughs> and Brother Ed said, Mrs. Rory, he can get up at any time he wants in the morning, as long as he's up by 7 o'clock mass. So I did all the prerequisites. You did your psychological counseling and your physicals and um, forms and everything that needed to be filled out, and I was accepted. And then Brother Ed came back in the summer and spoke primarily with my father uh, because he had not spoken with him earlier. And then I was ready to come into the Society of St. Paul in September of 1977. And a week before, I got called from the local PBS station in Louisville offering me a job. And I told him, I'm going to New York. And so he says, may I ask what you're going to do in New York? So I told him, I'm going to try to enter this religious community. And I said, I felt I needed to see if this is where I was called, because if not, I'm going to be out on the unemployment lines once again. And so uh, he said, well, I wish you the best of luck. And so I entered the society. There were four of us in my first original class, two of us then continued on into our novitiate, and we had our novitiate here in Canfield, and as I mentioned several weeks ago, uh, 40 years ago, on August 15, 1979, the two of us made our first profession of vows. And then I went up to our community in Derby, New York, outside of Buffalo, and went to my seminary training. 
And then during those summer months, I was back here a couple of times working in our vocation office, doing some ministry uh, in the community here. I was ordained by Bishop Franzetta in this chapel on November 17, 1984, right before Thanksgiving. And then I went down home uh, for Thanksgiving. And then the following Saturday, had my first Mass at home with a lot of relatives from all over the country that were there uh, visiting. My first assignments were in um, here, in uh, uh, serving here for 20 years. And so I did a variety of things. I was the local superior for a time. I was the director of our Alba House bookstores. I was uh, editor of our uh, magazine, Pastoral Life. I was also um, the formation director for many years uh, here, and then also served my, the final eight years here as provincial of my uh, congregation. In 85, I went up to uh, take a sabbatical year off, and then I went up to our community in Dearborn, Michigan, and served there for four years as the director of the bookstores. 2009, went to Staten Island and worked as the marketing director for our publishing house, St. Paul's Publishing, and I was there uh, until 2016, and the last four years, uh, because I either did a good job or a lousy job as provincial, they may be provincial again. So that was another four years. 2016, I was asked to go to our community in Chicago and again served as in a bookstore and a superior there. And 2017 came here and I've been here ever since. So I'm one of the few that have been in all of our communities that are there. And I've been truly blessed by the people I know, truly blessed uh, by the gifts that the Lord has given me and the community that I have lived with in all these various places. And it's good to be here with the guys and it's good to be here with all of you. So again, it's Priesthood Sunday, so support all your priests. If you know any of them, call them today, call them this week, write them a letter, tell them you support them, thank them for their priesthood, pray for them, pray for vocations for all of us. Pray for all our priests around the world that we need your prayers and support. And of course, it extends, of course, to our priests and our brothers and our sisters in religious life. Ask them how they became priests, brothers, and sisters, because all, some of you young people sitting here might think thinking about it. I had a communications background. I didn't have a very holy, necessarily, background. When people come from a variety of backgrounds and have answered the call of God, and they need all your prayers and support. So let's do that this day on Priesthood Sunday. Let us stand together now and share our profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us gather together our needs and the needs of our neighbors and offer them to our merciful God. For the church, that we may be a people of virtue, that we may possess with both our words and deeds God's love for and presence with the human family. 
we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For compassion that we may see and hear the sufferings of our sisters and brothers who are enslaved by poverty and sacrificially respond to their needs, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the upcoming Pan-Amazonian Synod of Bishops, that the Holy Spirit will guide them in renewing the faith and the structures of the faith community, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and homebound, that God will bring healing and renewal to them in body, mind, and in spirit, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace, that God will heal the wounds of past addictions, give understanding to world leaders, and deepen the desire of peace in their hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. As we pray the intentions of this Mass, let us remember Dave Senchik, for whom this liturgy is being offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all priests in our diocese and in our congregation that the Spirit of the Lord will continue to inspire their lives and ministry. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Also remember Father Archangel, one of our priests in Staten Island, and this is the feast day, the feast day of St. Michael, St. Raphael, and St. Gabriel, that the Spirit of the Lord and the Spirit of the angels will inspire him, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, listen to the prayers we offer today and grant them according to your will, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our hymn during the preparation of the gifts can be found in your missal, number 238, I Has Not Seen, number 238. I has not seen, ear has not heard, what God has ready for those who love Him. Spirit of love, come give us the mind of Jesus. Teach us the wisdom of God. When pain and sorrow weigh us down, be near to us, so Lord, forgive us In your peaceful world, I has not seen, fear has not heard what God has ready for those who love Him. Spirit of love, come give us the Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant us, O merciful God, that this our offering may find acceptance with you, and that through it the wellspring of all blessing may be laid open before us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed us in your own image and set humanity over the whole world and all its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made, and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, 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 Bye. 
blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Eucharistic prayer number three. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church in recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Michael, St. Gabriel, St. Raphael, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and George, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, Give kind admittance to your kingdom, and there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. 
at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and ever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us turn and offer to each other a sign of peace. peace Jesus, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Jesus, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Jesus, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us your peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, and blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Our hymn during communion can be found in your missile number 252, You Are Mine, number 252. I will come to you in the silence. I will lift you from all your fears. You will hear my voice. I claim you as my choice. Be still and know I am here. I am hope for all who are hopeless. I am eyes for all who long to see. In the shadows of the night, I will be your light. Come and rest in me. Do not be afraid, I am with you. I have called you each by name. Come and follow me, I will bring you home. I love you and you are mine. 
I am strength for all the despairing, healing for the ones who dwell in shame. All the blind will see, the lame will all run free, and all will know my name. Do not be afraid, I am with you. I have called you each by name. Come and follow me. I will bring you home. I love you and you are mine. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. I am the word that leads all to freedom. I am the peace the world cannot give. I will call your name, embracing all your pain. Stand up now, walk and live. Do not be afraid, I am with you. I have called you each by name. Come and follow me. I will bring you home. I love you and you are mine. The body of Christ. 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 Come back to me with all your heart. Don't let fear keep us apart. Trees do bend, though straight and tall, so must we. heavenly mystery, O Lord, restore us in mind and body, that we may be co-heirs in glory with Christ, to whose suffering we are united whenever we proclaim his death, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. I thank our musicians, readers, Eucharistic ministers, and all of you and those who are joining us over our ecumenical channel for being here with us this morning. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks Thanks be to God. Our closing hymn can be found in your missal, number 294, To Jesus Christ, our Sovereign King.
number 294. To Jesus Christ, our sovereign King, who is the world's salvation, all praise and homage do we bring, and thanks and adoration. Christ Jesus, victor, Christ Jesus, rule. 